Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you a tip that I found at work today, uh, which is a way to make Git status not terribly slow for extremely large repositories such as monorepos and such, or monolithic repositories. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so for a demonstration today, I have cloned the Linux kernel. Uh, this is the biggest repo I could find on GitHub. I'm pretty sure this will be good enough for our demonstration today. Note that I've done depth one just so it clones really fast. I did a video on depth one. I will put that in the description as well. Uh, but anyway, let's CD into this and we're gonna time get status. The first one will probably always be slow because I don't have file system caching set up or any of the git index caching. So we're looking at like, you know, 280 milliseconds here. If we run it a few times, we kind of get a nice little average. You can see it's about fastest, to, oh, I guess this one up here, 123 milliseconds, which, um, you know, isn't that bad. Uh, one, of, one of the repos at work is was almost two seconds, which was a bit much. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you how to make it faster today. And the feature we're going to be using is a new configuration option in Git that was added in, I believe, in version 2.24, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'll, I'll show you more about that feature in a second. Um, but we are just going to do git config um, feature dot many files one. Um, and I don't know whether the casing is is sensitive here. I think Git is insensitive with its casing, but this is what this is how it's documented. So I would follow this if you're doing that. Um, and after this, you need to run git status at least one more time, and that'll trigger this feature from uh, doing its stuff the first time. So if we do this once, you'll see that this one is slightly slower. But then after that, it is much faster. Almost three, two or three times, I guess two times as fast. This was 123 up here, yeah, 123. And now we're looking at like, you know, 60 milliseconds. Um, on, on the repository at work, it was four times faster. So your, your mileage may vary here, um, but this, you know, feature.many files can make it go much faster. And you can include this directly in your git config if you want to. Um, so I didn't do global there, but if you did dash dash global, uh, this little little bit of code here, this little bit of configuration would end up in your git configuration file. Now you might ask, uh, what does this feature.many files do? Do I want to enable this everywhere? Um, and so I can show you that by doing man git config. And if we search in here for many files, uh, let me actually get two hits here. Um, let me scroll that into view. The feature.many files enables config options that optimize for repositories with many files. I'll let you, I mean, I don't have to read this for you. Uh, but the thing that it does is it enables two things. One is it turns on the newer version of uh, the index file, which has some optimizations that weren't there in previous index file versions. The other thing is it turns on untracked cache to true. Uh, this is a cache for files that are in your working uh, directory that are untracked. Oh, sorry, I said uncached, I meant untracked. Um, basically, it will cache whether a file has been touched or not, even if it's untracked. That way it doesn't have to recheck a particular file. Uh, now, this one is safe to add everywhere, as far as I can tell. Uh, this option is only safe if your machine implements mTime properly, and this should be true on basically any machine, although I believe NFS is one of the ones where like mTime either isn't respected or it's respected after some amount of time. So, um, you know, this is not always what you want on some places. But for the most part, you know, core.untracked cache is a safe option. Uh, and this feature, this uh, feature.many files, is just a shortcut to enable both of those features at the same time. Um, this is kind of a, a nice little shortcut that get added to that. Um, and just to show you that it doesn't make other repositories slower, uh, here's pre-commit, uh, if, if I do time, get status. Um, of course, the first one is going to be slower. We're looking at like 4 milliseconds. Of course, we can't really see better resolution as to how many milliseconds or microseconds this is doing. Uh, but if we do git config feature dot many, many files one, and we do get status, um, you can see that it's still about that same three milliseconds here. Um, so for, for repositories with small number of files, it's not going to make any difference, uh, which is good. You, do, you wouldn't want those to be <laughs> suddenly way slower. Uh, but anyway, that's feature dot many files. Hopefully you find this useful if you happen to 
work in really large repositories of work, maybe this can be beneficial. Maybe you can save yourself a bunch of development time as well. But anyway, hopefully this is helpful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.